Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brandon. This is Bryce. Stefan. Welcome back to the kingdom. Welcome back to Archives. This is the show where we take a book uh, that has come out, released in a paperback, hardcover, whatever you want to call it, and we deep dive into it, talking about the book and exploring that through conversations. Also, weaving in our reviews and kind of our thoughts in the mix, but this is subjectively to dive deep in the book with you guys walking through what happened. So if you read it, you can sit there and agree. If you haven't read it, you can also keep up and follow along with us. Today, we are going to be talking about Batman, The Three Jokers. This is going. This is by Jeff Johns, Jason Fabick, and Brad Anderson. So this book was supposed to drive Rebirth. Obviously, that and Doomsday Clock both were not come, did not come out on time and both kind of taking homage to two exquisite stories by Alan Moore, Doomsday Clock, following Watchmen, the ki- uh, Three Jokers following The Killing Joke by Alan Moore and Brian Boland. So, what is, what is The Three Jokers supposed to see? Where, where did this come from? Because if we know about Grant Morrison, their idea of the Batman of jo- and Joker relationship is that Joker is basically the id, ego, and super ego, and changes his personality throughout the years. That's just kind of like the, um, kind of uh, how cr- satanic, I don't know if that's a word. But how that's crazy more psychotic. Yeah, how crazy more psychotic yeah. Joker is. You can throw in any crazy word. That's yeah. kind of what Joker yeah. is. <laughs> Jeff Johns said, Hey, Batman is gonna sit on the Mobius chair at the end of Dark Side War and look in to the future and saying there are not one, not two, but there are three jokers, three different jokers that have each kind of developed their own personality throughout the years of Batman being a character over the past 80 years. And that, you guys, is considered into three Jokers. We have the we have the, uh, the criminal, who is the first one, debuting in Batman number one with him and Gaggy. Um, who, Gaggy is in this book, by the way, so that was a cool little thing. And then you have the comedian, which is the one from The Killing Joke, the one that snaps uh, the picture of Barbara. And then you have the clown, who is the one with the crowbar that killed Jason um, with death in the family. So there's the three Jokers. They each have their own distinct costumes in here. And this book follows the format of the Killing Joke. So very easy to read. A lot of uh, paneled grids that are just go one, two, and then all the way down. Right. Six panel grids. Makes it very easy for Jason Fabic to capture the space, capture kind of the, the way yeah. he, you want the conversations to be structured or the action to be read. No, there is only one way to read this book, and that's just the way that he draws it. However, my only complaint is we never get anything that isn't like a right angle, right? Everything is just looked at. It's like I'm looking at you directly. There's directly, no yeah. Like, yeah. This book was coming out with Joker War by James Tynan and Jorge Jimenez, and that book had a bunch of angles in there, right? You Batman on different kind of landscapes. You had um, Joker uh, punchline just coming in and just, like you just said how all these different ways to format or to restructure yeah. the space you wanted to tell. This really doesn't do that. Yeah. Um, real quick, what did you guys think of, of this story? Yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of funny to how you mentioned Joker War because like if we're to compare artists, I prefer Jason Fabic. Yeah. But Jimenez's art in Joker War was a lot more dynamic and a lot more almost living. Yeah. Yeah. But very kinetic. Yeah, it's it, kinetic. That is that is a fantastic word for it. But yeah, uh, I really I really enjoyed this story when it came out. As I've let it sit over time, my opinion of it has diminished a little bit. Uh, I was talking to you guys right before we started recording about this. I think it maybe should have been a little longer. I agree. Even though it wouldn't have fit the three Joker's theme, especially since okay. This has been set up since the New 52. You've built up this hype all this time announcing that you know you're gonna go three issues. Into, yeah, into de- in depth on this. And we get, I mean, yeah, they're oversized issues. But you don't get much. But no, at the no. same at the same time, yeah, it needed to be longer. It needed to be, I would I would even say a little bit bigger. Because Joker War Joker War was massive. It touched, yeah, it affected. Batman's family, you know, like everyone yeah. in Gotham. Now, this this was a little bit more of a personal tell between Bruce, Barbara, and Jason. You know, which, and it, which they, isn't bad. No, which no, 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 not at all. Yeah, yeah. 
but at but, the um, same time, you can't help but compare the two where they were coming out at the same time. Right. 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 And I just felt like Jerk of, War, Jerk of War lived up to the hype a little bit more, whereas right. this got hyped up so much. It's like, it's like if a movie got if if an independent movie like an A twenty four movie or something got the same publicity as like a Christopher Nolan blockbuster. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> it like it. I don't. I don't. I, like I don't. Analogy. I think if the hype around this book had been a little less. Which, of course, with Jeff Johns and Jason Fabic and Brad Anderson doing the colors, with a creative team like that, there's going to be hype. But right. if DC had kind of kept the mystery going a little bit more rather than teasing all these variant covers and teasing how it's going to build off of the killing, you start throwing the killing joke in there, you're setting it's yourself up for failure. Yeah, there's standards like that. Yeah. Right. You're, yeah. you're completely elevating what you're doing. And not even the fact that it was. Building off the killing joke, it looked the same freaking way, you know. Yeah. Jason Fabric yeah. really, really, really yeah. tried to change his art style to look like Bolin's in here, using a lot of the same references. But yeah, like like you guys said, this is a story about Batman, Batgirl, and Red Hood and their connection to each of the Jokers throughout the years, how they personally have been affected, and how we can kind of resolve this. Was supposed to be like a yin and yang book, a deep dive into the mythos of these characters and we right. just didn't get it we got and it was very art dependent which is fine but there wasn't a whole lot of narrative that really scratched the surface i think like whenever i read a book like this i want to leave with not as many questions but i want to lead with more dynamic questions this was more like well what are we supposed to understand from this book kind of i was question. yeah i after how he set it up at the end of um the Justice League New 52 back in 2016 when Rebirth kicked off. Like, we didn't get this until... He didn't touch back on this until 20. 2020. So it was like four years later. And it just... For that long of a wait and how he had left that on that particular cliffhanger, it just yeah. didn't really deliver, you know, you for what way he was set up. You can't let stuff sit that long unless you're Jonathan Hickman on X-Men. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or Jonathan Hickman in general, just like, hey guys, I might be back, I might not, but when I come back, you know, I, better much. The whole, I better get the pr whole Prince Ali thing with the genie carrying me on his shoulders, you know? Oh, um, right. <laughs> you know, so let's let's kind of talk about the book. We open up uh, kind of we, in the same grid, same story. We're picking up from the grave of Thomas and Martha Wayne with the, with the, um, uh, with the Batmobile kind of driving through. Batman is very hurt. Injured, yeah. Uh, he's very injured. And he comes in, right? We see the Batcave. We see him take off his suit. And we see him go immediately kind of to Alfred. We see a lot of tidbits in here. There are a lot of cool little Shout Easter out. eggs in yeah. here. Yeah. Shout out to, we see um, we see the gun that went click, click. We see a lot. We see all the other Robin suits. We see Batgirl's suit before the one that she's wearing currently. We see a lot of the, the we see Catwoman's costume in the 90s. We see the Rex. We see Joker cards. Um and so he takes off his suit, and Alfred is patching him up, and he's asking, you know, what's going on? What's going on? So we already leave that. Okay, this is a character who's suffering. This is a Batman who's not suffering physically, but it's like, this is what he comes back to, and this is what he has to do to get better. You know, an umbrella, Bane breaking his back, right? The Riddler completely torching him. Like, this guy has scars all over I liked that shot, just, you know, they're showing, like, they'll show a panel of where he has a scar, and then they'll yes. show a flashback as to how he got that scar, you know, facing which yeah. villain, and so I thought that was a cool, cool idea. Right. Which so I, I like the I like the scars idea in general, how it basically yeah. sets up the overarching theme for the book. That is something I thought was done yeah. extremely yeah. well. Right. It was yep. probably the most well-thought way to start this book. If you're going to recap... If you're going to write a seminal Batman story, it would be a disservice not to mention what the shit he's been through, right? Right. So Jeff Charles right. is going into nice. this book saying, hey, I'm going to tell a very seminal story. When he pitched this book, he said, hey, guys, I'm writing an in-canon Batman story. Finally, I'm writing an in-canon, so fans, be ready. But because it took so long, it got pushed into the Black Label. Nothing about this book is any more Black Label than Joker War was. It was just... We can't set it in normal continuity because we already have a Joker book out right now. We already right. have a Joker event. But we have to fit this in because Jeff Johns is saying we do. So, like I said, you want to you want to write a seminal Batman story? You're going to recap his origin. That's what Jeff Johns does. 
We learn about how his parents died. Same shit we've seen before. Nothing new here. You see something once you see it a thousand times. Um, recapping what went down in Crime Alley with Joe. One Joe. quick question, quick little thing though. I, I did like the um. Just with the whole, it shows, you know, Bruce's origin, but there's a transition where it shows, like, his, his eyes crying as a child shortly after his parents were uh, shot by Joe Chill and transitions to Bruce right here. Oh, I think yeah. that was a cool way of thematically showing that, um, I, I think this gets lost on people, but the gravity of something like that, like, Bruce is constantly reliving that. That's his, that's his fuel, his motivation, his parents' death, and he couldn't stop yeah. it. Like, he uses that to fuel him as Batman. Like, I'm going to make sure this doesn't happen to other people, you know, and, uh, that's what, you know, that's, 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 you know, that's heavy. Like he's, uh, lives in a, Bruce Wayne realistically lives in a dark place a lot of the times. Um, right. And yeah, you know, he's I'm never really, my big going first. No, I was, I was just going to say, I hear a lot of people always saying how, you know, Batman isn't the mask Bruce Wayne is. And you right. really, you really get that sense in those two panel comparisons. Absolutely. Because that, his natural face and how he just looks with his, like, that's the trademark bat glare that everybody yep, sees. Yep. Everybody yep, thinks he's yep. trying to be intimidating. That's just his face. No, that's just him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's seen too much to really yeah. like kind of rebound from the status quo of his life. Right. So far I gone. So, you know, Steph, you were saying, man? Oh, no. I, I you know, I just, it, it, that's uh, just, I think that really helped get like the themes across about like you're saying scarred you know he's mentally scarred from this his whole life you know like and it just it's a negative scar that he uses to a positive extent you know but bruce is a character who's pretty much always in turmoil you know that's uh i didn't like there's certain things about this book that didn't jive but i think they got that point across well that you know bruce is a very very tortured character you know right. yeah Right. I think they all are, for that matter. Yeah, so yeah. We flipped the screen to an event going on where Joker broke in to a restaurant, and the Joker killed a bunch of people, right? And they were after. They were, they were Then they went to Blackgate, and they were after Joe Chill. And then mm -hmm. we flipped the screen, right, which are already transitioned. Now, we already get introduced to the Joker that's behind this. We get the one dash, the criminal. Um, so that's the one, obviously, from Batman's first appearance late back in the golden age of comic book uh, for a lot of people that are old, 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 old comic fans. Old, I mean old, I mean like ancient museum type comic book fans. Um, glad glad you still, guys are still in the hobby, but then we flip over to Batgirl, who is just running on the treadmill, and we're seeing these psychedelic thoughts, these PTSD thoughts that are going through her mind about the trauma, still having trouble sleeping, um, no. you know, coming back from leg syndrome, you know, and then we see this that the, we see the TV screen kind of talking about like there's a through a commercial, right? This is all being told through like a commercial on the screen, and then we flip to the scene, like kind of a kind of like a um uh, another thing about the Joker saying, Hey, like he broke into this place and there's something on, like at the same time as the previous Joker, and Batgirl runs and burns out the treadmill that she was she breaks on. it. Right, she breaks it, and they're like, "Oh, another one." So she, right. <laughs> so she's rebounding on the up and up, which is cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, think what was also cool. Sorry, uh, I just kind of noticed this now. Barbara kind of represents Bruce. Kind of lives in the middle, where um, he does use his trauma to fuel him and do better with it, but it has its negative connotations at the same time. Barbara is like an example of using something negative. Having a negative situation happen to you and using it to be better, be more positive. Yeah. While Jason kind of is the opposite. Like, you know, he had something negative happen to him and it, he kind of keeps going downhill, you know? I think that was a, like a yin and yang type of situation. I think that Absolutely. was a cool contrast. Something I thought was kind of cool too that I just, that I probably noticed at the time that I read this, but I just saw it again now. They each have, which Brandon, you touched on, you touched on this earlier when you were going over the premise but it's really cool to me how they each have their joker that traumatized them yeah like there's pretty much no overlap other than the joker persona right and we get yeah. introduced to that idea on this in this uh page here with barbara 
Right. Yep. Barbara's yep. In, Barbara is in the shower and we see the bullet wound and we kind of just see her lot we see flashbacks of her kind of just lying on the floor and she's not really shutting it down, but she's thinking about it. But it's more like yeah. you can't not think about it, but she's kind of using it as more drive. Right. Meanwhile, we flip the script and we see that same drive in Red Hood being used to crack skulls, right? Yeah. Over a gravesite because he's on the Joker's, he's already on the Joker's kind of a, a trail. So mm -hmm. he's just punching his way out of this situation. And we get a flashback to the crowbar situation, which we all which we all know from Death in the Family. We continue to see Jason punch skulls until nothing else is left. And then he figures out what he needs to know, but then we flip to the scene of we flip to the scene of the crime where you have a bunch of different people who were jokerized dead, you know, and we have Jim Corden and Harvey Bullock talking about how three different jokers committed a crime in three different places. So this is like the three jokers are now coming out of the shadows and they want you to know, right? So think about the Joker persona. They, yeah, they make their jokes. They're clown. They do whatever they want, but they understand how shit works. They understand how shit yeah. works. They're very smart. When they want you to know something, they'll let it happen. It's always yeah. going to lead to something else. So as they're talking about it, Batman comes in and he's talking to Barbara on the other line. And then Batman is also trying to track down Red Hood and trying to figure out how everything go is going on. And he knows, Batman knows that there are three different Jokers. And him and Batgirl are just saying, this is this is why they're coming out to leave yeah. something else. Batgirl's over at the Ace Chemicals and she says this is she's where Joker was born because there was a Ace Chemical shortage or truck that was stolen. Uh, so we're continuing with this with the story, and it's cool to see kind of the dynamic between Jim Gordon and Batgirl because it's weird because it was referenced yeah. that does he know that you're Batgirl? And she's like, no, not really. Yeah, right. Like, uh, he, he may have an inkling, but right. It was weird because they had a very awkward relationship. Yeah. So yeah, one one of the men that were terrorized by Joker woke up and started like pulsating. So they rushed him into the ambulance. So they're driving down, escorted by Batgirl and Batman and and they're continuing to kind of talk about the whole situation because this directly affects them. And then Jason breaks into the ambulance. So that's how Jason comes into this story. We see Batman coming through trying to stop Jason and then we flip to the Ace Chemical truck that is being brought back to um, back to their little hideout. And we have the criminal not the criminal, we have the clown coming in, opening the door to uh, the comedian and and the criminal. So now they're all meeting up, and we see them all in their respected costumes from that time period where we left off, just to introduce you to these different little figureheads. And then um, we see Bat, we see Batgirl and Jason already kind of share their two sides of the coin, I would say, because Barbara is very much saying you can't really come at people, right? You can't really just attack them. And then Jason okay. just wants vengeance, which yeah. their dynamic is very much kind of like that yin and yang, I would say. And that, a that argument is that, um, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, it's Batman, it's almost your fault that Joker does this stuff because how many times do you bring him in to Arkham Asylum and he breaks out and causes more havoc? Like at what point is enough like you know like some people argue, argue that just put him down he you know he's a rabid dog like he that's kind of jason's philosophy like no matter what you do batman joker's always going to be joker the only way you can't help joker the only way to stop joker is to end joker while barbara's more of like batman's thoughts you know thought process like there's always yeah. a better way you know you don't death isn't the option or killing isn't the option so i i, I really dug that aspect of this book i just really realized how much they really kind of pushed that between right. um, Barbara and Jason to two, two different sides of the same coin, if you will. 
100%, 100%. So then we they, we figure out where they're going to go next. So they end up going to the Gotham Aquarium. But before that, we get the scene where we get introduced to the three Jokers as a collective, the clown, the comedian, the criminal. And the criminal is saying that he's introducing his plan. What have we always tried to do? We've always tried to be better. Each time we come back, we're a different, we're a better version of ourselves. Yeah. Because there are three Jokers, if we want a better one, what do we have to do? We have to breed a better Joker, which means we have to take over someone. Yeah. So, um, the criminal takes the clown and they go off into their own venture, leaving the comedian to do what he does. We end up at the qu- aquarium and we see a, a very Joker high fish tank, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, right? Freaking Joker shark. Joker shark, yes. Or Joker freaking Rock. Joker shark. That's Still to say one of my favorite things I've seen in a while. <laughs> right. A smiling shark, man. Yep, smiling nice sharks. It's the one that you need to win, smiling shark. So, <laughs> um, so Batman senses that they're there, kind of like a little Spidey sense, and it's Gaggy who also first appeared. So that was a direct reference to the criminal sending over one of his original henchmen who is called the court jester. You guys don't know, read Batman number one, and you will see a lot of weird, funny language. <laughs> that was... Which, Golden Age Joker arguably was more homicidal and crazy than Joker was today, because or than Joker is today. Well, now because the, the common code of authority really, like, kind of... They had no boundaries. On it. <laughs> yep, nope, they had no... They, they had no boundaries, right? Um... Or else Hank Pym would not have slapped Janet the way he did in Avengers in today's comics. Yeah, I was gonna say we don't have a comic code authority now. I think you could get Yeah, we don't we don't have the code. We don't have the code now, but people still kind we of have the, we have the audience, I would say no. Right, yeah, that's in, it. <laughs> in big two comics nowadays, they've gone back to that original, like pushing the boundaries. But if you look at some of the golden age art and stuff, especially some especially some of the horror. Which mm. Joker definitely fell into that category a little bit. Bat Batman still was kind of tame, but still some of the themes they tackled were just absolutely insane. Like yeah, I, I personally yeah. still don't think we've gotten that level again. Nope. Because no. there no. there were no shits given about it. There's like ah, <laughs> oh, they can take it. <laughs> it's like that kind of mentality. Now it's like we have to groom people on how much they can take. You know. Right. Kind of like there. Okay, there was no backbone back then. Is like you you kind of made your own backbone, right? Yeah. Nowadays, it's kind of like yeah. it's great to care about people's feelings, right? It's good to like be sensitive to other people's feelings, but you almost encourage people to get to to, to feel negativity rather than sticking up to it. Right. I would say that that's like a very that's a problem that yeah. not a lot of people touch on, even. Even in our own world, we really see, you know, who's, who, how do you respond to negativity? And I think that's also a theme in this book is how do you respond to negativity? Yeah. yeah. Um, now yeah. you see both Jason and Barbara have that backbone, but they experience it or they let it out in different ways, I would say. Different, yeah, different outlets for sure. Gaggy has no backbone, by the way. Uh, Not just because yeah. he looks the way he does, but um, <laughs> Gaggy's backbone. So <laughs> speaking on Gaggy, his, he's, he's weird. That, that's a weird character. So. They're yeah, fighting. Is. We get a cool little action scene, and then um, Gaggy decides, "Hey, look, I'm going to shoot the place." Or Red Hood said, "I'm going to shoot the place because Gaggy is right next to the, the shark, Joker, Joker shark, Joker shark, Joker and shark." Yeah. So Jason shoots the glass, and the shark comes out and eats Gaggy. <laughs> <laughs> the one chop it. just just completely gone. turn into the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> 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 completely turned to that star like pit and then um we see the clown kind of trying to i don't know what he's doing he's just like trying to fight and he smashed like a fish full over red hood's head but well, a joker fish well, yeah, yeah he's yeah, trying he to throw joker promise he wants more joker fish i guess you know <laughs> but they end up capturing him and batman and batgirl batman especially batman goes on to do his own thing and look into another lead in the what he saw on TV, which was the kind of the whole thing with Joe Chill. While that is going on, right, we see the we see the clown and we see Red Hood and we see Barbara, and we see the clown kind of having a few tricks up his sleeves, like with the cards with the flower. But then we get a cool little dialogue moment. We get a heart to heart 
between the one who killed Jason and the Joker who killed Jason and then Jason Todd, which is so symbolic because Barbara has knows what it's like to almost give your life to Joker, but she doesn't know the extent of actually the coming back, the dying part, and kind of the ramifications that has on Jason. And this is Jason's yeah. really first time addressing them. Yeah. That's another thing. When Jason Todd came back into existence, it was just the Red Hood. No Jason Todd. It was the Red Hood. Yeah. Right? Um, and then we got under the Red Hood, and nothing really got solved. Jason just ended up being his own character. And I don't think Jeff Johns has really done much research on Red Hood since. I, don't, I really don't think Jeff Johns really kept up to date on Jason's character simply because of how vengeanceful he is and how closed off he is to other people's opinions. If you look yeah, at the, Jason's character... Jason in continuity, like he's more open to yes. others and yeah, he's definitely opened himself up to that. He's he not won't that admit reckless, it, but he is. But yeah. here's another thing. Jason has not, be, has not been a reckless character. This book is a definition of a reckless idiot. Like Anakin Skywalker was right before he came Darth Vader. He runs in, busts stuff up, asks questions later. He's a little, yeah. become a little bit smarter than That's that. You know, thing than... is not even when he's with the outside, when he's with his outlaws, but when he's himself, he picks and chooses his targets. Yeah. There's a reason why he never went back to Joker. In this book, it's like, yeah, not. Ne-. So Jeff Johns wrote him the same way he did when he first got resurrected. First time, yeah. And ignored how many years of history? 2002 to um, today, 20 years, 19, yeah, 18 years, years. Yeah. 17 Something, the something you kind of got to think about, though. You have to think about the way that trauma works in those kind of situations. If you're presented with the exact same situation and the exact, like, I hate to use this analogy, but I mean, because it's never happened to me, but it's probably the closest thing that I could compare it to. Imagine mm-hmm. someone's in, a, in an abusive relationship. They get away from said abuser and then, you know, they've spent all this time growing and changing. Years down the line, they run into the abuser again. Are those feelings not going to come back? Yeah, I was going to say something about no how trauma. much you run, They'll come yeah. back, but you have a different handle on situations. I mean, but, but the but catalyst not, that not, Jason didn't get away though. That's the thing. I I, yeah. I I mentioned you getting away. Jason didn't get away. He did, in a, in a in an essence, he did. He died. But the catalyst he, that he put him on the road to becoming Red Hood was the Joker, you know. So right, which was he is the way Joker's obsessed with Batman is how not Jason's really obsessed with Joker, but Joker always claims like you're the you're the reason why I'm around. You know, you're the J- J- Red Hood. Joker is the reason why Red Hood is the way he is essentially. Right, like, that's the reason why he yeah. wears his mantle, and that was that right. was a kind of the pattern that I wanted to address right here in the middle of the page, saying, "Have you ever wondered why he uses my former moniker? Um, who, in their right mind, would take the identity of their killer? Am I right?" He's like, "Because I'm owning you." He's like, "I own yeah. you." Yep. And. And then Jason just kind of like breaks down. He's like, "Oh, I'll be, I'll, I'll be your distra." Oh, and Joker kind of sees right through it. So Jason tries to prove that he's like a tough guy. He's like, "Nothing's gonna end my suffering until I, until we have like the arm for an arm, like for like a life for a life type right. situation." So Barbara's saying Batman wouldn't do this, and then the clown starts busting out. He's like, "But Batman isn't here. He wants Jason to do it. He wants to take have- him on." That obsession, he wants that reasoning to continue. Yep. Right? He knows that when, when J- if Jason kills him, Jason's still not going to be moving on. Yeah, he's still going to be. They right still going to be in his head. Yeah, he's yeah. still Jason. I would say is still obsessed with the trauma. Mm-hmm. He's still obsessed with it, right? And yeah. I would say to that measure, Jeff Johns wrote him well. His ability to handle situations past the Joker before the Joker, says, I did not actually do research on this character, and I'm going to pull up Brian Michael Bendis and write him the same way I I remember reading the character, right? The last time I I did. So, And um, if this wasn't supposedly in continuity, he would have written his character just fine. You can pick any era in an an Elseworld story or in an out-of-continuity story. Right. And as long as it fits the tone of that story, you're good. I feel that the biggest thing about this book was because it's meant to be an incontinuity story. It's not, but people still read it like it is. It's 
unarguably. I had a hard time reading this in continuity, just like you guys were saying, like based off of like what we've seen with Jason. um, Yeah. Just, uh, well, minute things like Alfred popping up and (laughs) we all know how that turned out. But Alfred didn't die when this book was being written. That whole thing with Alfred was meant to be in the continuity of when this book was supposed to be written. It's supposed to come out, right. Post-New 52. Exactly post-New 52. So before Batman number one right. by Tom King. That's when I'm like putting this book into context because that's how Jeff Johns want interviewed and said, this is an incontinuity Batman story. DC says, okay, it's, it is, but it isn't. Yeah. We're going to market it. We're going to still write it like it is because you're Jeff right. Johns and you, we owe you that. But we're going to put it as a black label because we already have a Joker of it. So right. the reader is ultimately forced to handle this book not as an Elseworlds concept because that would have been so much – that would have been a much less drawing experience because you wouldn't care as much. I wouldn't care that you're talking about the killing joke. The fact that you are, I put it here, and it doesn't hit that expectation with the way you're formatting your language. You, right. You're not Ellen Moore. Do your own fucking thing. I'm sorry. As, as much as I pay respect to Jeff Johns and his work for DC, you're not Alan Moore. <laughs> His last well, two. Well, no, nobody is. Well, right, nobody is. Yeah. And there's a lot of writers nowadays. It'll never be Jeff Johns. Right. Right. I can't mimic his Teen Titans. I'm sorry. No one can. It's great. You can't mimic what he did with Green Lantern. It's, it is odd, though, that like his last two big projects at DC were mimicry sequels or mimics off of Alan Moore's yeah. stories. and Other than Shazam, which Shazam wasn't Shazam a big did. project. His Shazam but, yeah. was good, though. Yeah. I loved his Shazam. Yeah, I like yeah. his Shazam run, yeah. I think his Shazam was better than both these two books, but... Everything that he's come out of DC, though, since he started working in their TV and film department, it's weird. All of that has been late, but the second he goes over to Image, it's almost coming out quicker than on time. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, and Gary Frank's <laughs> yeah. artwork looks just as good, if not better. Than then, my- yeah. Like, I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me we could have gotten this all along. Yeah. All you had to do was actually let someone else handle Titans and swamp thing and star yeah. well not star girl i understand star girl right I still got his hand in star girl, yeah. but you mean to tell me that you could have actually freaking given us a good freaking joker project you know come on now i will i will commend three jokers for coming out on time especially yeah. with somebody like fabic doing the drawing who it didn't come out on time it got delayed four years it was well, when he they finally right? released when it, it started yeah. coming out it came that's it because they were done with it that's because they were done with the whole book when it was coming out. Everything well, was only three issues you should be. Right, yeah. It's not After like a writer is, is uh, writing issue five when issue one comes out. Right? Like, that's when, I just, that's when delays happen. No, this book was over and done with. Before it got released. Sorry, before it got released. So, anyway. Was that on Jeff Johnson or is that on DC? That's on Jeff Johnson because he never freaking wrote it in time. Jason Fabic. No, I'm talking about you said the book was done and over with before it ever even. No, because like, they, they as soon as they were DC. done, because DC wouldn't release. So they didn't want the book to get released until they were completely done because it was three issues, right? Because they didn't want right. delays once the book came out because it was ever, it was so long. Jeff okay, Johns, so DC kind of backed themselves into that hole then. No, Jeff Johns did. It was Jeff Johns. Look, look, here, let me break it down. So Jeff Johns and Jason Fabic were supposed to write this to drive rebirth. That didn't happen. Yeah. Okay, because Jeff John said, hey, I don't have the time. Or I'm writing it, but Jason Fabic's just waiting for me to get the scripts. Right. I'm having a hard time getting him the scripts. There's a reason okay. why Jason Fabic took his time with the panel layouts and constantly revisited it because he was waiting. He, he was stuck waiting for new scripts. No, I, I understand that. I, that's not what I'm saying. When the book, they didn't start revisiting this book Right after like the first issue, mm-hmm. until like what a couple years down the line, until like they really started revisiting this before the like right before the pandemic hit. That's when we were starting to get all all of these ads and all set up. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying they they were late, but DC chose to tell them, "Hey, we're not releasing this until it's done." Yeah. So yeah, Jeff. So yeah, Jeff Johns was late. Jeff, with it. I'm, was I'm Jeff not saying. Johnson. I'm not saying. He's, I'm not saying he's blameless, but DC didn't have to do that. DC right. could have just said, "Hey, look, let's let's if this book is already being delayed, we can delay it more, or we can just 
or we can do something else with it, you know? But sure. or, either way, or why would you release a first issue? Because they didn't want to run into another Jimmy's Clock situation where you release issue four and what six months later, issue six comes out. Right. True. What they could have done, would honestly. Pick up a three issue book like that? Who would pick up three issues like that? No one in their right mind. Which is why what they maybe should have done, though, was take, say, these three issues and release it just like that. If they were going to be this late, take these three issues, yeah. release them just like that. Yeah. That's a great and then a few data. years down the line, revisit it, do another one of these, and have three books like this so you really get to tell a full story. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that's what he's doing with his Batman Earth One, essentially. It's like, I don't know. Exactly. Exactly yeah. like Earth oh, One. Lord. Yeah, yeah. Give, him the, give him the Earth One treatment, and I think it would still get the same fan reception. But anyway, right? We have Jason. He's looking a little trigger some. He's down in the dumps, and Joker is egging him on. You get the Joker face, like I won. You get the I won Joker face. Screw you. And he's like, I'll be your Robin. Starts laughing. Jason pulls the trigger and kills him. But not before Barbara attempts to stop right. him. And then, uh, yeah, these last three page, these last like four or five pages here made this entire issue stick out to me. Yeah, like yeah, like right. book one, book one in my opinion was phenomenal. No, yeah, well, book one. Was yeah, it was great. off to a great start. Yeah, it started off. It was great. Off great. This book was so good. I love book one. See, yeah, <laughs> same fucking momentum and the rest of the issues. I would actually give a damn about the story, but this goes in the at the end of the day. I just, I just let my hands. I'm like, who cares? I don't care. This is this yeah. is another. This is a seminal Batman work or piece of work that won't reach that expectation. It establishes, hey, we're gonna hit this level. We are. We're talking about the origin. We're referencing the Killing Joke. We're talking about all these different. We're referencing all these historical stories. Right. But we're gonna not. We're we're gonna drop the ball. It's no longer. Now, I didn't like the fact that Joker died so quickly, one of the Jokers, because it's no longer Batman and the three Jokers. It's Batman and the two Jokers, and one of them died. Yeah. <laughs> Early. That's now the three Jokers at this point. Yeah, a, I wanted to see more of like a... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, kinda, you kind of see, like... I don't know. It kind of establishes a theme to me that each character is going to get their vengeance on that okay. Joker. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Didn't exact on their individual Joker, and it didn't exactly deliver on that. No. And if they would have kept that theme up, it's like, hey, we've got these three characters with these three Jokers. Each character is going to get some type of vengeance on their respective Joker in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Then that ending would have been perfect. Yeah, I think they, the the whole. Uh, well, this is just more broader, but the the whole I it's like. We'll get to the ending, but the identity is almost like no points for the whole three jokers thing, you know, like and that there's no point. Who cares? No. That's why it's just that's why it's like great. This is this this was a cool concept. Well written. Yeah, great idea. This was a cool concept to be explored, mm -hmm. but you made me not give a shit about it. That's really what this book is all about. So Barbara starts crying. She's mad at Jason, and she she ultimately walks away. Um, and then Jason says, "I hope that's the right one." Like he's like, "I hope I killed the right the, the one of the of the two. So then we get to know the comedian. This is where we start getting into the killing joke. You know, the killing joke. There was a family scene: the Joker having a wife and kid. Okay, that was referenced, and no one really knew about the family. No one knew it was it was some. Small little family in a le it, um, out there, and that's how he got his start because he was poor and trying to survive for his family. So this Joker is all about family, the comedian, right? So we see the house, we see his wife, and he's sitting down to dinner. This is referencing a memory. We see the kid, right? And then we see Joker is really, the comedian was just, eating dinner by himself with a mannequin and a stuffed animal, passing it off of, I'm still eating dinner with my, with my, uh, my wife, wife my family. and kid, yeah. which was a little 
it's it, it, it kind of like it's a little sad, you know. It's it's a little sad to see. I guess it's like my my I I felt a lot of empathy for Joker in this scene. Almost like if he would have had the family unit, maybe he might not have become Joker. You know, like he would have been a family man, right. and but he lost the family, so it's something he still yearns for, which is odd. Joker actually pining for something, or you know, that that was an interesting little emotional beat for the right. Joker. Right, and then so the criminal comes in and he's like, "Yeah, you're having dinner with yourself." Blah blah. He's like, they're, they're, they don't matter. The only thing that matters is the Batman. And now one of us has died, right? He's pissed. He's livid. And then we get this question. Uh, well, real quick, real? I loved this shot. Uh, this, oh, yeah. These panels. Um, oh, that's phenomenal. And right. then you, you're like, what the hell is going on? And you see it's like from the point of view of a fly. I thought that was cool. That was a unique little perspective. Right. right. And that's what's cool about this art, and it kind of gives you those, even though it's like there's nothing else to it but the surface level. It's yeah. cool surface level shit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we get Harvey and Jim Gordon, and they're like kind of questioning shit about the Joker, right? And like if he's real, if he's not real, and then we we get Red Hood, we get Barbara, she's back at the police station with Batman, and then um. Filling in Batman. That girl says he killed a Joker and they're driving and Barbara's not happy with Batman because ultimately what we come to is there's a reason why Jason is the way he is because Batman yeah. never Batman was never there, never reached out to Jason. He was really on his own when Barbara's trying I, to I like Jason as a character just because he represents like a, Batman's failures. You know, that's one thing Batman that's something you kind of put your hand on and it turned out to be shit, you know, it turned out to, and he's, he's a constant reminder of that. And that's like, Bruce almost feels guilty for not reaching out. So it's like, that's why he never really Does forces a heavy hand. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He knows he messed up, but he doesn't know how to come to terms with that. Right. But also there's a flip side and Jason has never, well, has never been his own character. He's never been giving his own voice. It's always been his frustration with the world. Yep. Right. So it's just anger. And body. That's all he is. That's where the yeah. all Jason is. To me, I'm not a big Jason Todd fan. He's decent as Red Hood, but I don't love him simply because this is a character that has had no development. Yeah. Right. You know. They, they, if, yeah. There's potential there, but I don't think any writers have really, besides Judd Winnick himself, have tried to. You this. had Scott Dell for eight years, put him in an environment with other broken people that were actually now worse thinking about it for him. Right. Because then you get instances like these where there's a reason why he still he is what he is. Right. Absolutely. Um, I wonder if Jason ever had a healthy relationship mm -mm. with anybody. Mm -mm. Starfire count? J Jason? Oh. I mean, it, what, if that was... Uh, are you talking about all, uh, outlaws? Early. I don't know if Starfire's ever had a healthy romantic relationship with Yeah, anybody. she kind of is. Everything's just kind of physical for her. No, not really bad. Even, even, even Dick was kind of rough at times. That oh, yeah. That's, that's a lot of rough dick right there, Bryce. That came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree with that. Like, even from the jump, like, you know, since his origin, Batman found him on the street trying to lift, boot, lift the tires off the Batmobile. Like, he was a street kid, you know? He yeah. didn't really grow up with anyone, giving him advice or looking out for him. Kind of had to fend for himself. And when he thinks he finally found that in Batman, that was almost like a sham. So Grayson I, I, could have told him he was out of luck there. Right, yeah. Like I I've been down that road, man. And you might want to pull back. So yeah. Batgirl was trying to tell Batman about like how Batman should have been there, right? Like he was for her, hoping to overcome it. Batman just rolls up the window. And I was like, You dick. Batman, you're a dick. Um, but he did make that one line. He used cause he uh kind of said, like, you know. You turn out okay. I thought that was gonna happen with Jason. You know, like I, I thought he was gonna. Be. Well, no, that's what that was. What Batman's fault? Like he put that expectation yep. on Jason when not understanding that they didn't handle the trauma the same way. You know, like right. And you got you got to look at their their upbringings. So, so as as a Robin, Jason is always gonna be compared to Dick. Yep. 
their motivations were totally different to where mm-hmm. putting to where making Jason Robin was setting him up for failure from the start. Right. Because yep. Dick with, with Dick, it was okay. I'm making you Robin so you can deal with your trauma by bringing your parents' murderers to justice, so that you won't turn so that you won't turn out like Batman, right? And you will instead grow past it. Exactly. When Jason became Robin, it was okay. Here's You're an still in this position. Anger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unleash it. Don't try to get better. That's if you're ever ever angry, put on the costume and go find some crime. Plus but some then skull. Bruce would yell at him for going too far when it's like, okay, you put him in that position in the first place. Exactly. Who does that? And Bruce wasn't. I when he. Uh, I think when he adapted Jason, if you want to call it, I it was always like you said. He was trying to help Dick be better, so not Dick doesn't become him. But he brought Jason in just as a position filler just so he'd have his robin you know like he wasn't necessarily trying to make the kid's life better it was like i need my robin you know here's a kid who's got some kind of heading down the right path maybe you being my sidekick which i need to keep me on the right path will benefit both of us right you know right so we get red hood smashing skulls trying to figure out where the jokers are and he figures out they're in a place where they sell pools or of a place of a big pool. So he ends up going over there. Batman goes over his other lead, right? And we see a lot of different criminals in Blackgate, and we see Joe Chill, dun, and dun, Joe dun. Chill is not there, which leads to... Uh-oh, sorry. But, <laughs> which leads to... Uh, jo- Joe Chill is in the hospital because he is stage four cancer, and so Joe Chill is the one who killed Batman's family. He's the one who killed... Um, Thomas and Martha Wayne. So you look at a character who's been right there with Batman and Joker, who's there before. Who was Batman's first villain? It was Joe Chill. And you can almost say Joe Chill is responsible for everything because there'd be no Batman without Joe Chill. There'd be no Joker without Batman. So Joe Chill That's is what, ground zero. That is really what the criminal is after. Not right. really Batman, but he's out to be. I want to be the number one thing in your life, motherfucker. And it's right. going to be. It's not going to be Joe Chill. It's going to be me. So what can we do? So Judge Chill has cancer. He's in the hospital. We see Jason. He makes his way to the pool, and he gets attacked by a bunch of people who got Jokerized. Jokerized, yeah. Ace <laughs> chemicals that were stolen at the beginning, right? And I've never seen so many freaking naked Jokers. And I, right. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of naked people in this book. You want some? You want some Joker cake? <laughs> can we? Call me that. Uh, Go down. Joker cake. Up, Joker, Joker cake. cake. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, is that Nightwing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, that, nice, nicely done, nicely done. So Jason gets attacked, <laughs> and we basically see ten thousand versions of Gollum Joker hybrids. And oh my god, he does. Yo, Sh- Smeagol, my precious. Oh right, my Jason, god. my precious. <laughs> so. We see Jason stripped down, similar to Jim Gordon was. This time he's not in a circus; he's in a chair. And we I have... didn't touch. That's a good observation. I didn't really peep that. Very similar to the killing joke when Jim Gordon oh, yeah. was up. Uh, yep. Same angle, same yep. exact angle. Reminds me of that scene in um. Have you guys ever seen Casino Royale? Nope. Oh yeah. On movie Daniel Craig. I might have yeah, I would. Would movies. Be, yeah. Yeah, it just, okay, <laughs> comics and movies are very easy to compare, so that's why like I make a lot of movie references. But yeah, if you remember when Bond is kind of tortured, strapped down, nude, tortured in that dimly lit room where I think yep. Le Chief took him, very reminiscent of that. Yeah. Oh, movie. absolutely. Yep, that was a good call out. Mad, that was Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, well, if you guys know Mads Mikkelsen, I think he was. Um, He's playing in Matt a few Mickelson things. Was, uh, I know he's been in some kind of comic book property, but yeah, oh yeah, he's had to have been, but yeah, he's got that look. Anyway, right. yeah. so yeah, so yeah, I'm like, you didn't realize I was like telling those conversation like two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. So, um, the criminal brings out a crowbar and he's trying to torment Jason. Puts on his mask again. Puts his mask back on with the whole like little Joker thing. I made it a Joker mask and. 
He's saying, you know, you died. We killed you. We are all you're ever gonna do is cause pain to other people. You are the next Joker. You are the best Joker. You will be the best Joker. That, I, and he starts beating with a crowbar and torturing Jason. And he's like, I'm rooting for you, kiddo. Why? I hope you rise back up and prove us wrong as the Joker. And he keeps beating him with that. Meanwhile, the comedian is nowhere to be seen, right? And there's a well, real why- quick. I like the little observation that um, I what's the OG Joker called? The that's not the comedian, isn't it? The criminal. criminal. The criminal. How he uh. He's kind of always like a pouty face, but because he said it, it hurts to laugh, you know, like he's the only Joker where he, it's, he doesn't really enjoy smiling, laughing because there's pain behind it. So I thought that was interesting. A little interesting. Yes. Kind of, yes. My bad. Yeah, he's, he's the one that's kind of, he's rarely smiled in this book where yeah. the other two, whenever you'd see them, it's just cheesing away. Yeah. <laughs> right. She's straight cheese. So Barbara, <laughs> Barbara and Batman break in, and they they fight off all the all the Gollum Joker hybrids, all the all the precious, all the, all the naked Jokers. Yeah, hit them with a car, the usual. Uh, hit them with a car, but I, I really, yeah, you hit them all with a car. Batmobile just comes in. Uh, what isn't there an idea to save these people though? You know that's what I'm saying. Batman kind of is like he don't care about that right now. Yeah, I mean, don't care. Good. Jeff yeah, not a Batman's M.O. No, no, no. Jeff Johns doesn't care. He's like, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, there's there so go. many people. There's so many people in Gotham. We can just take a hundred out there like it's nothing. Right. And when they start, <laughs> when they start writing this book, Batman v Superman had just come out, and yo, true, very true. So <laughs> Batman was on that. Uh, what Again, do you call it? It's like sweep and murder people. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they find Jason, and he's. Naked, tortured, on the floor, and Barbara takes Jason back. And this is where, where we get to the where this is. This is starting to be where the book kind of loses its footing. I would say this is where the book bit, yeah. This is where the book gets really garbage. Like this, like I don't want to say garbage in the fact like you yeah. shouldn't hate it because there are people out there that love it. But this is a scene where it's like, you gotta be fucking. It kind of loses its momentum at this point. You know, like it was I, leading up, yeah. building up well. This was a change of pace. We're dealing yeah. with all these little. Joker torturing, and then we get, we get a take take Jason back to Bar- Barbara's apartment. Batman leaves, which leaves just the two. Keep in mind, Batgirl first appeared when Neil Adams was drawing the character. Neil Adams freaking brought her into the mix with Danny O'Neill. This bitch yeah. was kicking ass while Jason Todd was still in diapers. I just want to paint the picture. She was the babysitter when he was Robin. No way. Well, that well, but this was you know before uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. So after I the wreck, kind I think. Okay. Huh. So. So anyway, we're. You didn't finish what? I said I don't care. I'm like still. The thought is very jarring. I mean, didn't Barbara and Bruce have a relationship at one point or a little? Yeah. In the B so, yeah. continuity. And what's oh oh the animated. Yeah, before they rifted that off of something. No, that was past. when uh, they they uh, Bruce got Barbara pregnant, and then that is probably the angriest I've ever seen Dick Grayson at anybody. Understandably, understandable. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't even think he would. I don't even like he wouldn't even get mad at Jason as much for this as he did Bruce. So- but before the crisis on Infinite Earth, though, but. You- it's almost not fair because Jason Todd was a redhead before Crisis on Infinite Earth. So, you know, you got to adjust to the changes. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, who really ages up in DC unless you're a Robin or Kid Flash? Very true. <laughs> very true. So, Continue. Anyway, back to the story. They're talking about their traumas, right? And how they recovered. And Barbara's saying, like, I am willing to give you an open chance. I'm willing to work with you. I care about you. We all thought you were dead. You came back as Red Hood. We all wished we had been there from you from the jump. Jason's like, this is the first time someone's ever like actually showed like they care. Maybe they wanna, maybe they wanna explore something else, right? Which this is where a confidence book comes out of left field. They end up kissing. 
while he's in a towel, holding hands and everything. And Batgirl regrets it right after, as we all did. I, I didn't know. mind that. I thought, no, I was, let me speak on that real quick. I think you could get you could get some interesting stories between the relationship between Jason and Barbara. I, we were talking about this uh, in the, what do you want to call it, in the back room before we premiered this. And while it would be kind of a failed relationship, I, you know, stuff like that does happen. Like people do yeah. form bonds in a relationship based off of sharing a tra- trauma together, you know, like um, it's not, it doesn't, not to say it always leads to a bad ending, but you know, when you kind it's of form a bond weird. off of, off of toxicity. It's, There's a reason uh, relationships don't Yeah, work. but this felt weird. Right. They, the way that they set it up was so weird. Cause it's like, there was no footnoting any of this. It just well, happened, and it's like, oh, now we're gonna run with it. It was okay. The kiss, it. it didn't fit. It didn't fit. The kiss, the, book, I don't think. the kiss was forgiving, but it's towards the end when they, you know, certain characters are seeking relationships, professing love. It kind of comes out of nowhere, you know. It's like, right. where have you been like, this whole time? It was like, oh, someone, someone cares about me. Now I'm gonna like, instead of just saying, oh, this person cares about me because they love me for who I am, not like they love me, like they want to be with me. But look at Jason. Like you said, no, no one had ever done that for him. At this point, he's always just been about anger. This is the first time showing someone showed it, or said to him, like, "Yo, you matter. You're worth it. Like, you know, uh, we got your back." So the that you know, I think for someone who's been so angry, he would kind of um, become very clingy. You know, throw us all into this. Like this person just just, uh, just hold up your head, say station, and, and he'll get the message. Station. <laughs> But no, uh, you could. There could be some interesting things done with that. It's not idea, but it's not something I uh, was like. Bleh. I was like, ah, uh, I'll see where this goes. Did it pan out well? That's a different story. Yeah. So Batman is back in there doing his little detective work. He sees how each of the three Jokers committed their crimes. We see some more little Easter eggs, and we we yeah. see that. Uh, Batman took some took some things from the Joe uh, from the um, from the Joe Chill cell, and there were two tickets. Two, they were um, there were two tickets to the theater, and that's where we're gonna go next. And that that kicks off the third issue, and how we're really seeing the situation. And they kind of plan out, okay, how we're we gonna do this. Jason's like, I'm gonna kill him. Batgirl's like, you know. And there's a little bit of the, the fact that the kids created a lot of tension in this little bit. Um, so we end up going into, well, actually it was in this issue that Batman saw the tickets, right? Um, after they took Joe chill and red hood says, Hey, Barbara, can we talk? And kind of do, he's like, I know I screwed up. Um, but now Jason is kind of, he was kind of talking about killing the Joker. Which right. he knows now. He's not yeah. going to move on. Right. So. Batman is. Batman's kind of just talking about. What he wants to do. How he wants to move forward with this. And the fact that he's. um Going to figure out what they want with Joe Chill. Simply because Batman already knows. Like okay. You want to do shit. Right. You want to do some funny shit with Joe Chill. Because he was. He was what made me. So. They go into the theater. It says. One night only. The new Joker. And we see the ace chemical in the bottom. We get this whole little performance set on by the Joker. We have a bunch of little Joker minions acting like kind of movie theater popcorn guys, right? And it dressed up like that. And then we see Joe Chill, right? Yep. And on the recording that was seen earlier in issue two, and we see kind of like the suicide of, okay, Batman, you have two options. Save the Jokers. Or save Joe Chill. Which one do you want to last? And there's at the bottom of the of the ace chemicals that there's a huge pit so that he can fall in. So the whole purpose is okay, Joe Chill is the best one because he's the, he's done something that we never did, and that was be there since day one, which I thought was very, very thoughtful. All right. And then so they're fighting, every shit hits the fan. Batman ends up saving Joe Chill from the chemicals, which was, I would say, hard for him. Oh, Flint may have had to step out for a bit, but 
Yeah, that was probably extremely hard for him, especially where like you've spent your entire life reliving and not moving on from something that that guy did. Right, one hundred percent. So, yeah, Batman saves Joe Chill, and we're moving forward with it. And then we get the scene with the criminal, Joe Chill, and Batman. And Batman ends up for, kind of forgiving Joe Chill. Which I thought was a huge moment and honestly one of my favorite moments of the book to show that, yes, Batman still lives with his trauma. But he's kind of in the middle of all, of all three of these characters, like Link said, where he, to an extent, hasn't necessarily grown from it, but has learned to cope with it. 100%. 100%. Um, and then we get another line saying, God, it hurts to laugh, but he's like, he's having a good time. And then this is where we get the plot twist. The comedian, the one who's kind of been behind the scenes this whole book, kills him. And he's like, it's never been about, it's never been about making a better Joker. It's been about us. Like every good Batman Joker story is. He's like, it's been, it's always been about us. You know, at the end of the day, we are each other. We bring each other back. We keep each other in check, which was really powerful. Um, and he says the Joker isn't the one that's broken. It's Batman, kind of referring to what we saw in the beginning of the book. And then we get the same conversation that we saw kind of in the killing joke. Right? Where they were just talking to each other, having a heart to heart. Except not near as civil. That's one thing I enjoyed about The Killing Joke, which Joker was very civil towards Batman because Joker doesn't respect a whole lot of people. Right. But even he respects Batman to the point where in The Killing Joke, Batman tries to redeem him, and Joker so much as says, I'm sorry, but it's too late for me. Right. When have you known Joker to apologize to anybody? So that is, that's one issue I kind of had with this book. It, it was a cool moment in the uh, police van. But just the conversation in general, kind of, if you're referencing the killing joke, don't kind of, like, undo it. Right. Welcome back. You get Joker eyes in the guys. meantime? Connection, connection. You get Joker eyes when you were gone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, my apologies so we're just talking about the last yeah. scene kind of between Batman and the comedian and we get this little part where it says he said, yeah I convinced them that Joe Chill would be the best one of us because he was there from jump I convinced him that Red Hood could be a viable Joker right. but at the end of the day I healed your greatest wounds I healed the failure that you caused on Jason Todd I healed your, devastate, your devastation with Joe Chill so now I am the thing that brings you there. I am your greatest pain. It's me now. And that's that's what the comedian it is. It was there me, for. Barry. <laughs> no no. Get the fuck shit out of here. So, <laughs> um, so then we see we Joe Chill dies and, and we're at his grave site. And then we, we end up going into somewhere in Alaska. And this is where the book kind of where I don't like it. We see Batman driving out into the wilderness. We find out where that is at the end of the book. But we get a little love letter. Barbara opens up. Or it's attached to her door. Yeah, she so Barbara. she doesn't get it. Yeah. Right, it's a, it's a note that Jason wants to give her. Dear Barbara, I want to make a change, but I can't do that without you. I know I've come across cold and distant, but I know why. I've always admired you, Barbara. Your strength, your determination, your heart bullshit. Uh, you think what happened was a mistake. That is a moment, but I think we could be great together. I really do. I'm giving up being the Red Hood for us. I can be something else, or I can just be Jason. Or I can be just Jason. All I need is one chance to prove to you that I can be better, and I will devote my life to making you happy. Loved, if you don't think I'm worth one chance, it was all just you caught up in everything, then throw this letter, letter away, and I'll never mention it. I'll even understand whatever happens. I love you, yours, Jason, but it gets sweeped up because it fell off, and it so gets she never gets up. it. She never gets it, but I think the letter itself was not right for the book. Not right at all. It kind of came out of nowhere. It was good. I don't think it was good for Jason's character in general because yeah. if you're going to change something that massive about yourself for someone else, then that's not growth. Right, like this, right. this letter is supposed to represent growth. Yeah. 
but you do you do the things that help you grow for yourself. Right. Right. Not for anyone else. You know, you got to do it for you first. Now, why did take care of it? Why did it take him this long to realize? Oh, maybe I should give up the red hood and focus on myself. Because Joker was still alive. Yeah, but yeah. they all are. Well, his Joker anyway was still alive. That that's the reason I think anyway. I don't think he was going to get closure until he he killed him. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. So, anyway, Batman is in Alaska, and. He is, he's, ta- he's talking to Alfred about what he, he found in Alaska. And it was Joker's mom, or not Joker's mom, Joker's wife serving dinner to her son. And, and Alfred said, well, how long have you known who he was? And he said, this whole, like, I've known forever. But it was never about that. And it never has been. It's not who Joker is. It's what he's become. It's not like, and I was like, uh, no, that should have been its own thing. I think yeah. the of not yeah. knowing would have been better. I, like, I now like trying, that part of the book, but yeah. Because well, now you're trying to tie things back to the killing joke after you went so far off the rails. of What, what was the original killing joke message? It's supposed to be a very poetic story about Batman and Joker. And how yeah. people around those two characters get hurt affected. Yeah. What did this do? There was no poetry in it. There was none of that same po like the art was very poetic. The art kind of showed that, but the language of this book, when you're talking, when you had no right, you, it, it had no right to bring it right. back like this and to say, "Oh, now we're gonna get poetic because that's what we ultimately pitched." Let's do yeah. that the other book. No, right. sorry, no, and it never answered. Who are the three jokers? What are they for? What do we have to learn about the three jokers? Right. One's dead. The other Two one, are dead. Yeah, but but died in the last issue, so I'll give it that. But it was really, it was really Batman and the two, two Jokers, Jokers and a cameo appearance of one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, calling this book Three Jokers was a mistake. Mm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it was misleading. Honestly, like, if you would have just called it, you know, if you would have just taken three out of it and just called it Batman Jokers, Batman Jokers. Like, it, it, I think it would have fit the story more because you yeah, know yeah. there are going to be multiple Jokers. You don't know how many, and you don't know who's going to come out on the other side. But it was almost like with the number three, they were giving it prominence, and it didn't really have any prominence at the end. Like, you know, so I think I agree with these Jokers would have just been a better title because you would have gotten across, going to deal with multiple Jokers. But yeah. there's no significance in the numbering of what the, where those Jokers were. Right. And I think it's cool, too, that Batman's always known who the Joker was. Because, I mean, he's the world's greatest detective. Yeah. How it, is he, he not be. going to? It's, it's more, it's less believable to me that he doesn't know who he is. Than right. He does. Yeah. Right. But it's also like, he's like, Kai's like, yeah, I knew. I'm the best. But there was nothing else there. I don't know. This book goes under the I don't care for it because you really didn't do anything in the book. What happened from beginning to end that I can genuinely say I care about? It was almost reminded me of the Dark Knight Rises. I like to call it the Dark Knight. I love Christopher Nolan, but I like to call it Dark Knight Rises like the best made bad movie there is. Because if you're never to see Batman in any iteration, that was your first time seeing him. It's not a good take on Batman. He would have lost had it not been for Catwoman. Like Bane was about to break him. Catwoman comes out of nowhere. So this book is like that. It's like really well made, well drawn. Jeff Johns, he knows the characters. You know, he's, he's that's Except one of his strengths. Except for Red Hood, a little bit, but I, I'll give you that. But you know, he's good with the dialogue. He's good with all that. It's just the story kind of, there was no point at the yeah. end of the day. Like it kind of could have been left on the, like, you know, when he introduced the idea, it's like he thought, it's like he introduced it, like he had something to say, expand upon it. But he really didn't expand upon that, you know, like, so how it was set up was completely different from the execution. Right. Yeah, which Dark Knight Rises is actually a really good comparison. And like you, you called it the best bad movie. I don't even, I don't even think it's a bad movie. I think Dark Knight Rises is a great movie. Just like I think this yeah. is a great story. The, but the execution. Honestly, I enjoy the book. 
I really do enjoy the book, but just like I enjoy The Dark Knight Rises. But when you follow up The Dark Knight and Batman Begins, and when you exactly, follow yeah. up The Killing Joke. That's the way, well, good way to put it, yeah. It is bad in comparison. It is yes. good on its own. Yeah. And I think if that were if that was somebody's first exposure to Batman and they hadn't seen Batman Begins or The Dark Knight, I could see Dark Knight Rises being someone's favorite movie on its own. But he would have lost had it not been for Catwoman. So it's like Catwoman's the true hero of the, the, that film. Calling this book bad is it didn't achieve its purpose. That's the thing. I, I, I don't I agree with you, though. It had a I mission think it's statement. Bad. And reading it, the dialogue was so thoughtful, it grabbed you in. The art was so thoughtful, exactly. it grabbed yeah. you in. But there was nothing to it. But on its own, I, I kind of I see where Bryce is going with that. Like, if you mm-hmm. just read these on their own, not taking into account the other history or things that have gone, just the story itself, well, well produced story. Same thing with Dark Knight Rises. But it's when stacking them up against their precursors is that you start to see the faults. Yeah, and that are really glaring. Right. Like imagine if somebody walked into a comic shop, you pick, they pick up three jokers, they buy it, and then somebody says, "Oh yeah, it's kind of like the killing joke." And it's like, "What's the killing joke?" And then just walk out. Right. I could see them loving this. Right. Absolutely loving. It. I could I could see it being one of their favorite Batman stories if they've yeah. never heard of or read the Killing Joke. The idea is cool. You know, well written Batman. Um, you got everything you would want in a Batman story. It's very well marketed. Yeah, very well marketed. Yeah, this this book just tried to mimic the wrong thing. Yeah, it set it, it set itself up for failure when it tried to touch something so iconic. Right. Well, like you get well. that ha 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 yeah. like Joker thing on like that's on T shirts everywhere. That's people's phone cases. Even though yeah. the picture, even the picture, yeah, the, even the camera yeah. thing. Yep. Like the killing joke is being referenced out there and people don't even know it. Right. Yeah. It's super ingrained in pop culture. Right. And like when whenever people talk about like Batman stories that they know, mm-hmm. Killing Joke and Year One are the ones that get mentioned. And honestly, Killing Joke gets mentioned way more than Year One. Killing Joke, Long Halloween, Year One, Dark Knight Rises, Mount Rushmore of classic Batman. Death in the family, I would say is up there. Right? Yeah, I don't know if I'm missing like I, if you're not talking like anything pre- preluding modern Batman, like modern Batman. I'm talking Black Mirror, Court of Owls, um, Batman Ego, uh, yeah. Creature. Well, if you're going the before that, then you got to put, <laughs> like, put, put Hush in there. What? You got to put Hush in there in some way. I'll throw Hush in there. I think Hush is extremely overrated. But I, a little bit, yeah. I, I think, think Hush but, is also overrated. I think Hush is. But it is seminal and it is loved by many in the it's, same it's way. Seminal, that it's loved. seminal. There's no debating that. But I think it's, it's overhyped. It set up the idea for Jason Todd to come back as Red Hood. Because, you know, in that story, it turned out to be Clayface. But I think fans really responded to it. Like, what? That was Clayface. We thought we want Jason. That yeah. kind of put him on the road to you that. No, but if we're talking, like, classic Batman, this yeah. is up there. Well, Daughter of the Demon is one of my favorite. Or the Demon's Head. That's the kind of... Black I love Mirror. It. Is that the Grant Morrison? Um, no, Black Mirror is, is... No, that's Scott Snyder and Jock. That's dealing yeah. with... That's dealing with Commissioner Gordon's son. Okay. Now, if we I, there's were, a really. If we were to line this up with modern Batman stories, I think. Doesn't you compete. Could, uh, okay. So, you, what do you have? Court of Owls, Black Mirror. Hush. I would say it's better than. I wouldn't say it's. I would say well, it's. Hush, Hush is in that first group. I'm talking like New 52 and on. And onward. But... New 52. So, you have Court of Owls. You have. So, we're talking New 52 and, and post New 52. Yeah. Court of Owls, you have Creature of the Dark. Creature of the Night. Right? Creature of the um, Night, yeah. Um, you have Batman Eternal. You have... Um, Battle for the Cowl, I would kind of put in that... I would kind of put was, in that... Battle of the Cow was... New, before New 52. Was way okay, before New 52. it was like right before that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like 2009, to the New 52. Okay, so that could go either way. Yeah. But, I'm yeah, not putting it there. If we're um, cutting it off in New 52, then yeah. Uh, you then you have Tom Kings, and then you had you had the button, you had the button. You had oh, Joker did. War. I would say Joker War, which I would say Joker War was better. I like Joker War a lot better. I did enjoy Joker War. More. Yeah, Joker War. Yeah. Um. Well, um, Death of the Family has to go in there somewhere. Death of the Family. Is that the New 52? Yep. That's Volume okay. Three, and then you have okay, Zero Year. That. 
<laughs> zero year, yeah. Um, oh, with your year is a hot bunch of garbage. But... I enjoyed zero year. I don't care. Oh, <laughs> you will. I mean, all right, you know what? I, I got zero year, you got empire. Zero zero just, you got empire, right? Just okay. say, you will. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think the most frustrating thing about Batman books is you have a character like the Riddler who's been around forever and you have yet to have a costume that's not horrible to look at. Hey, how do you what can you really do with him though? His whole thing is like the question mark that's tacky. That's always make him tacky. look like a pimp. Make him look like a pimp and you're fine. They Don't tried to do that. be the Joker. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, you guys. Uh, this is it. The link for, for everything will be in the description. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everything. Like, subscribe if you like what you're seeing. If you want to see another book, let us know. We have a pretty lined up schedule. I believe our next book will be Heroes Reborn. I believe that will be led by... I would think Michael will lead that one. Um, Michael, so what's the, the Not to interrupt, but the final verdict are we going with this on, guys? I think, I think it's worth I the read, but I don't think... Don't set yourself read. up for something mind-blowing. It's a... Read it because good it's story. a seminal story. Right. Read it because it's a very seminal Batman story. It's a good read. Um, if you're a fan of the Batman Joker right. relationship, I believe this is a must read, but I feel like it's a who cares must read. Um, because yeah. that's where it goes in my pile. It just goes like, it's like, I don't care. I don't give a shit. But definitely I, not a good starting point for Batman Joker. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah. I would, but I would I'll, I'll give it a solid seven out of 10. I'll give it like a I solid seven. I don't. I, think, I didn't yeah, hate it. See, so you're like, I didn't hate it. I just don't care. 5. Like there, there are things about this book where it's like I liked. It's for me, but at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't care about what you, what, where the narrative where and the it, story right. left us. Yeah. Right. I cared about the first issue. If you let the first issue stand alone, I think that would have been one of the better modern day Batman issues of all time. First issue is like a nine out of ten for me. Oh, easy. Then yeah. I'm like, uh, nope. Yeah, anyway, progressively yeah. got worse. <laughs> uh, stuff going on on the channel. We have weekly wrap up every Monday. That is our weekly comic book review show. We have Whiplash Wednesdays, where me and Steph over here talk about a fun comic book show. Uh, this airs next. This airs Friday. So we, our past episode, we've been talking about DC fandom and recapping all of that. So you want to see our opinions on all the shit that we're getting? Definitely check that out. And then we have what else did I do since then? Probably nothing else. Um, we were, uh, Peace Be Army Bad Batch was kicking it over on Spine Ticks last week, so make sure you guys can catch that rewind, catch us everywhere else. So, we, um, yeah, and then with the show, creator interviews are same old, same old stuff is coming that I can't talk about yet. I'm super excited, though. I think November is going to be the biggest month for Creator's Corner because we're two guests that, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I would be able to announce it by then, by, by when this video drops. But if not, uh, thank you guys so much for everything. Follow these fine guys. Their links are in the description below. Thank you, guys. Station. Station. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.